Crosby, uh, Mark, Santora, and then uh, Lenore White. Present. Thank you, I can hear you. Okay, this open meeting of the Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely via Zoom pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order as extended on June 15th, 2023, February 12th, 2022, and July 16th, 2022. Access information for the public uh, has been provided on the town website. Please note that this meeting is being recorded. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. If you're using a dial in by telephone feature, you can mute yourself by pressing star six. As chair, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. Please note that you will not have screen sharing privileges, but staff can display any visuals uh, per your queue. After speakers conclude their remarks, I will invite each commissioner by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions. After the commissioners have spoken, I will allow public comments to be spoken uh, by participants. Participants uh, must use their raise hand feature by clicking on the hand icon at the bottom right of the Zoom menu bar uh, to indicate they would like to speak. If you're using a dial in by telephone feature, please press star nine. Uh, to raise your hand and star six to unmute you when you are called on. Participants who raise their hand will be recognized one at a time by their name and then will be promoted to speak. Public comments will be followed by commission and applicant responses. Finally, each vote will be taken, um, will be conducted by a roll call vote. As a reminder, the commission is concerned with state and town wetlands and stormwater regulations. Concerns outside this purview uh, need to be addressed by the appropriate boards. For, for example, road condition must be addressed with the select board and traffic concern must be addressed with the planning board. You would think I would know this by heart and I wouldn't have to read it any longer. Nope, all right. 705, any, um, any, uh, Action items that we can take care of ahead of time, other than just the meeting minutes. Anyone here? Um. So I always feel like it's a quiz to recognize people's names, but um, if you want to skip to the third and fourth action items, the two COCs, those are quick. Okay. So that's for Fifty One Depot Road. Yes. Okay. Uh, any? Uh, what's your? So they gave us an as-built plan. Um, I checked all the conditions, they've met everything, their site is stable and their work is done. Um, so I recommend issuing that COC. Okay, do I have a motion? Uh, I make a motion to um, approve the COC for, can I do both of them at, or? We've only talking about one, so just oh, the one, first I'm one. Sorry. Yeah, 51 Depot Road. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second. I'll do a roll call vote. Betsy? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. I am also a yes. The motion carries. Okay. Uh, next one is 127 Ferry Street. Uh, Leah, your recommendations? Yep. Um, same here. They're done with that project. Uh, we did get a letter, pretty detailed one actually, from their engineer, which was helpful. I recommend issuing the COC. Great. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to issue the COC for 127 Ferry Street. Second. A second. We have a motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Betsy. Yes. Uh, Patrick. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. I am also a yes. The motion carries. Uh, we can probably do meeting minutes. So uh, does anyone, has anyone, bleh. I'll get this out. Does anyone have any comments or questions on the meeting minutes for August 16th? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Uh, I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for August 16th, 2022. I have a second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Betsy? Yes. Uh, Patrick? Yes. Uh, Jonathan? Yes. I'm um, a yes, that motion carries. Anything else here as far as extension request? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Um, uh, so this is for the, at 100 Westboro. So I know we talked about this at one of the public hearings, a little right. short version of it. Right, so this is for um, Afonso Village, which is the, the mixed use part of the project up front. Um, so 
Their permits are set to expire July 29 next year. They're requesting a three-year extension due to um, time delays since they worked on all those modifications to the project. It is their first extension request. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions on that? Betsy? No. Patrick? Jonathan? Is it uh, normal for them to, to request an extension 11 months from the expiration? Uh, if you're working on a large enough project and you haven't started construction and you know it's 18, 24 months to construction, asking early is the way to go. I think that's great. It tells tells us that they, they have a have a plan and they know they can't make it before the expiration. Much rather have them do it 11 months than 11 days, right, Leah? Absolutely. So. Yeah, I just, again, I looked at it and said, did it expire on July 29th? But no, it expires July 29th of next year. So no yeah, question. They haven't, no. I mean, they haven't even started yet. So they know that that site's gonna take a lot longer. So um, do I have a motion? Uh, I make a moment to uh, grant the three-year extension for 100 Westboro Road, Alfonso Village. Do I have a second? Uh, second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote. Betsy? Yes. Uh, Patrick? Yes. Uh, Jonathan? Yes. I am also a yes. The motion carries. All right. Still got five minutes left here, Leah. Do you want to... Um... <clears throat> read in and then continue um, the land trust hearing. Okay. Because it's a continuance. Sure. Okay. Let me go to my lead. Okay. This is the walking trail one, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, the applicant has requested a continuance to 920. So pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Grafton Wetlands Protection Bylaw, Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing to act upon a notice of intent and application for Grafton Wetlands Bylaw permit to rebuild a portion of an existing walking trail at 5 and 11 Rear Wheeler Road. Um, the applicant has asked for a continuance. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to grant the continuance for um, 5 and 11 R Wheeler Road, Grafton Land Trust Walking Trail. Do you have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Betsy? Yes. Uh, Patrick? Yes. And Jonathan? Yes. I am also a yes. The motion carries. All right. Um, I have a couple little things that um, I itemized at the very bottom of my report. I can go through if you want. That sounds great. <clears throat> um, so we started the conversation last time about the CR for the Highfield subdivision. Um, I am still waiting on town council's review of those draft documents, but I just wanted to check in and see if the commissioners had any comments after reviewing it last time. Yeah, this is, I mean, other than like looking at the uses, I, I don't I just don't have a whole lot of comments because it's more legalese than anything else. Sure. Uh, I'll just do a quick roll call. Betsy, any comments? No, I don't. Patrick? No. And Jonathan? Nope, no comments. Yeah, so, so we're just waiting for uh, the, you know, town council, okay. Yep. Um, the other thing I had is just a reminder for, um, for you, Sandy, if you're able to schedule a time to come in for that form that needs a notary that we oh, yeah. emailed you about. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, so if you can just work with Jan. Okay. Uh, yeah. Reach that. out to me. Uh, uh, my weeks are kind of nuts right now. And yeah. Okay. We'll find a time. Fridays, Fridays I'm at home. So if you're in the office, it doesn't matter what time. Fridays, I have more flexibility than any other day, so. Okay, that works. And if you can get it on my Outlook calendar, I will come. Okay. So, all right, two, two more minutes. Um, I don't know Sandy, if I can pull this um, off. Yes. 
before we jump into that, I was just going to throw out there that my wife is a notary and um, could potentially help notarize something depending on the time or day. So. Yeah, right now, I mean, we would, I, I, I just go to the town offices and there's one there. It's just, you know, you okay. know how work is. It's, it's, it is, it's work. And, uh, and sometimes I have a few meeting, meetings, like six today, and uh, it, it has a way of slipping away. So, um, I've, been but, I've been in meetings from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it was yep. a long day. I, uh, Monday turned into Tuesday, and they forgot to move the Tuesday meetings, and all the Mondays got on Tuesday. And, yep, yep. I know the feeling. Okay. If you do need it, though, I know we're, we've chewed into the minute. Or sorry, Leah, but if you do need it, um, just let me know, and I can help coordinate with my wife. Shoot, we're right in Grafton, so if you do. Appreciate that. Okay. All right. So we have less than a minute, so we'll just wait to do the NRAD. That's the only other public hearing, correct? Uh, that's the nope. continuance. The Sorry, 39, 39 yeah. Street. Sorry, I needed yeah. to scroll up. You can't see, but I actually am scrolling. All right, 715. All right, so I'll, I'll read this in. Pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Grafton Wetlands Protection Bylaw, the Conservation, Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing to act upon a notice of intent application for Grafton Wetlands permit uh, Bylaw permit for the construction of a house addition and foundation replacement at 39 East Street. As I said at the beginning of the meeting, just for disclosure, uh, I do live at 74 East Street. I am more than 300 feet away, but I just wanted to make sure that the applicant understood that. Um, and if they have any issues, I have no problem recusing myself. There's no particular reason under state law that I need to, but it's just close enough. It's 0.3 miles, so I'm definitely further away, but uh, wanted to do that. So. so if you guys have any problems with me staying, I will stay. Fine. You're fine. Okay. Fine. So, um, you're up. All right. Good evening. <clears throat> good evening. My name is Norman Hill. I'm a licensed civil engineer with the consulting firm of Land Planning. And the property at 39 East Street is owned by Ewan and Faith Cameron. Ewan is with us tonight by Zoom. Uh, there are two houses on this property. And this property overlooks Hayes Pond. <clears throat> the uh, house number 39, I'd like to talk about the project that's proposed for house 39 first, and then I'll talk about the project that's proposed for the cottage on the property. So in house 39 has a large porch that wraps around it, and the roof overhangs the back right corner of the porch. So I don't know if you can look at that back right corner of the porch on, on house 39. So what they're looking to do, that the house overhangs that portion of the porch currently, but under that overhang, they'd like to uh, put a little addition, uh, a four by eight addition. So they'll have to do some excavation work there, pour a foundation, build that four by eight addition, and then connect that to the existing overhang roof. So there's no increase in impervious area caused by this, but... Uh, they will be doing construction and it's within 100 feet of the pond. So we have filed a notice of intent. Uh, the second thing that's proposed on the existing cottage, that cottage was built on a slab. And uh, uh, what they'd like to do is, is better support the existing house. So rather than tear down the house and start over where they're so close to Hayes Pond, the way they're proposing to support the house is with helical piers. So these piers get drilled in to the ground uh, around the perimeter of the house. And then they pour a grade beam that rests on top of these piers. And then they frame from that grade, grade beam up to, the, up to the existing house. So then the house can no longer uh, settle. Uh, so there'll be no, no uh, excavation for this work on the cottage. 
There's no backhoe or earth being removed. They just drill these helical piers into the ground. Uh, and they stick up a few inches and then they'll form a grade beam on, on top of the pier. So the piers go about every five feet. The building's roughly 25 by 25. So picture five piers on each side of this building. And they're gonna form a grade beam on top of these piers. What they'll do is, have you ever seen a footing board? You've got the boards front and back. So they'll have those two boards and they put steel rebar in this proposed grade beam. And then they fill that opening with concrete. Then once that cures, <clears throat> then they will frame between the top of that grade beam and, and the existing cottage. And then they'll sheath it and sign it and that will be completed. So there's no excavation work. It's just, they're gonna be supporting the building, but with, with these helical piers. So uh, we're proposing siltation controls around the, around the site so that no, no silt can get into the haze pond. And the stockpile area, you can see where we've got the stockpile area proposed out in front of house number 39 in the garage. So that, that's a quick overview, but I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, just for information, we'll go through the commissioners first with any questions and we'll open it up to any abutters or citizens that are on this call. Um, so I'll go around first. I got a couple quick questions, but um, Betsy, any questions? Sorry, if you answered, I didn't hear. I'm sorry, no. Okay, uh, Patrick? Um, I don't have any questions right now. Jonathan? So, Norma, I'm, you, you mentioned the existing house. You, I see the proposed four by eight addition under the second floor overhang, but then you mentioned the grade beam is going next to the cottage. Yeah. So that's going to be all within the no touch. Yes. Okay. So, so go ahead, Jonathan, if you have anything else. No, I, I'm just, I'm staring at the plan. I just um, don't have any other questions. So go ahead, Sandy. Yeah, I, I guess my questions isn't so much what you're doing because it doesn't look like the footprint's going to change other than that small addition. Um, my, my question is more uh, means and methods. Um, if you're going to be putting in helical piles, um, you need to have access. And I'm just wondering what, what how it's going to be, how you're going to do helical piles. It's usually just a little skid. You come in, you drill it in. It's pretty simple, uh, very effective. But are you not going to put it underneath the, the, the actual structure or are you going to be putting it outside the structure? That's why I can't figure out how you're going to, what are you going to do with the wood framing of this? Right. So the contractor, his name is uh, Josh Drucker. He, he, he's going to, he's going to be online with us tonight too, but I spoke with him earlier today and he said what, what he's going to actually do is saw cut into the existing building, a trench, you know, not a trench, but a, but a indentation uh, about, a foot deep, almost three and a half feet tall. And then that allows them to position the helical thing under the actual outside frame of this, of this cottage. And then the machine comes in and it's got a, it's got a horizontal uh, drill thing that attaches to the top is like a 90 degree gearbox that then drills it into the ground. So we, for every one of these five, 10, 15 to 20, whatever they are helical, um, things, they're going to have to cut 25 holes into the side of this building so that these things will then rest under the outside wall. Okay. Um, and, and then the existing slab is going to stay in place? Yes. Okay. And it's really what's being supported is the exterior framing? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, and for me, I was just, and again, just, um, and again, it depends upon, uh, you know, the contractor and so forth. It's really, it's surprising how small the skid steer is that d does these helical piles. And only because I had them done at my house and it, it is, it, it's, it, it's pretty economic as far as space it takes. It's not like you're bringing, bringing in large equipment. So my, my question is really less about the project itself and more about, you know, how is it being done? And is, is there any access that's needed via, you know, construction materials or construction 
vehicles to get in and around. So that was really my only question. Otherwise, you know, the, the, the four by eight addition is pretty minor and that's, it's within the hundred foot, but it's, that's pretty damn minor. And then you're just doing maintenance on a building is more the means and methods. So, so mm -hmm. any other questions from the commission? Uh, and then uh, we'll open it up um, to the uh, to the public. In the meantime, Leah, if you can kind of review what you looked at from your report. Sure. Um, I just have two comments. One is they are requesting a waiver to work within the no disturb, and two is we are still waiting on their DEP number, so we can't close tonight. Okay. So Norm, as far as the variance, other than the fact that buildings in the no disturb, is anything else you want to say on that? Well, um, yeah, yeah, they don't want to move the building. They'd rather just keep it right where it is, and, and that would minimize the amount of work and, and minimize any risk for the resource area. I'll go around to uh, the commission quickly to see if anyone has any comments or questions. And specifically, we're just talking about the variance. We have a building within the 25 foot no disturb and they're doing work on that building, therefore they're doing work in that 25 foot. So Betsy, any comments or questions on that no. waiver, re uh, waiver request? No. Uh, Jonathan, everyone moved around, so I'm all screwed up, okay? Sorry. Uh, Jonathan, any questions on the waiver request? Is there a special condition of any kind needed for, I understand what you're saying with these little helical piers and the, you know, it's a skid steer, a little, you know, mechanized thing that's drilling these in is it just a silt fence that collects any you know debris or do they have to do anything after the machinery is out of there because it's in the no disturb like is there a special condition or anything there and norm you may know that i don't know that's well, what i'm asking this helical gear, gear is like a knife blade so picture this knife blade just screwing into the ground you know, and, and so when you're done, the ground doesn't appear to have been disturbed. It just goes right in. It does, doesn't like bore a hole and then fit into the hole. It, it actually it, screws in like a, like a corkscrew. It's screw into a cork yeah. or a bottle of wine. Yeah. Correct. I understand what the helical pier is. Um, but if you have it on a small skid steer or, or something that's going to rip up all the, the lawn or whatever, is it lawn that's within that 25? Or are we actually in a wetland? plant area. No, it, it's lawn. It's lawn around the building. And so this 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 machine is on two tracks. So the machine, I would guess, is about six feet by six feet. And it's on two tracks. And so, yeah, there's a chance that he, he's going to be ripping up some of the lawn, but I would think they could break that out and seed it. Yeah. Um, no other it, questions. It, yeah, and the plan shows erosion control on it now. So, um, Patrick, any other questions or comments about how it's being done or anything? Um, no. Okay. So do I have a motion uh, to approve the requested waiver? I make a motion to approve the uh, requested waiver for 39 East Street. Sandy, do we need to go back to public comment I'm first? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a waiver not. process, but um i've already asked has anyone um any attendees raise their hand so so those who are in attendance as the opening statement if you want to have either ask a question or find out something about this project uh please just raise your hand and staff is so diligently watching to see if a hand is raised and if it is we'll uh, invite you to be an attendee and you can ask your question not seeing anything, we're just going to go through the process of uh, doing a motion to uh, approve the waiver request. And the waiver request is needed because the existing structures are within the 25 foot no disturbance. And if you're doing work on that building, there's no way of, around doing work within that no disturbance. All right. So I think, Betsy, you had started it. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll start again. Um, I make a motion to issue uh, the waiver to allow work in the no disturb zone 
at 39 East Street. We have a second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Jonathan, you move to the top of the class. Yes. Patrick. Yes. And Betsy. Yes. I am also a yes. The motion carries and the waiver is approved. Um, as far as you know, um, doing an order of conditions or voting on the order of conditions. Uh, we do not have a DEP number. Uh, that's something that's issued by Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. We don't have it. We cannot close the hearing. Um, so we'll have to continue it. Um, I will go around uh, now just because we're here. If anyone has any uh, special conditions other than our standard conditions so that you can hear them and that if we come back on a continuance, it should be fairly straightforward. Betsy, any kind of comments or questions on potential special conditions? No, I do not. Jonathan? Okay, Patrick? No. Thank you. No. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, Leah, did you have any recommendations on any special conditions? I did not. No, I mean, just the erosion control and tell the, whoever's operating the skid scare, don't to drive into the pond. That's pretty much it. Um, having said that, we all need to, excuse me. We'll need to continue the hearing um, norm to the next meeting. Hopefully yeah, that's you'll... fine. I'll have someone else sit in for me because I won't be able to make that meeting, but that's fine. Two weeks is fine. Okay. So do I have a motion? to continue the hearing to our next meeting. Um, I make a motion to continue the hearing for, um, oh my God, 39 East, East Street. Street to our September 20th meeting. We have a second. Second. A motion is second, roll call vote. Jonathan? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Uh, Betsy? Yes. I am also a yes. That motion carries. Um, and Norm, you can, you know, basically fairly straightforward. Um, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. If you have right, any other Leah. questions. All right, Leah, get well, Leah. Yeah. Thank you. you. You're, you're a trooper for get being well. on here. That's kind of not great, but yeah, that's all went above the call of duty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Stay well. Yeah. Bye bye. All right. Um, Action, that's it for public public hearings, correct? Oh, no, we have the NRAD, right? Correct. Okay. All right, let's read that in. All right, pursuant to the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Grafton Wetlands Protection Bylaw, Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing to act upon an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation at 35 Crosby Road in Grafton. Who is here to discuss that? All right, feel free, just please give your name. Hello, my name is Lenore White. I'm a professional wetland scientist with Wetland Strategies in Plymouth, Mass. I delineated the wetland on this parcel and um, this ANRAD was submitted to you folks on or about July 1st. Um, since then, the peer review consultant, that would be Art Allen from Ecotech was retained and he visited the site. Um, I was with him on the day that we visited the site and he did move a few flags up gradient and frankly they, uh, they needed to be moved up gradient because I had done the delineation back in November and uh, in the summer the skunk cabbage and other um, herbaceous species were clearly up gradient so um, the flags were moved up gradient. The, the plan has since been revised to reflect those new flags. And um, I know there was a, a flurry of emails this morning about uh, the commission having the plan. Um, I assume they have it. And um, I also saw an email from um, Art Allen specifically saying that he agreed with the plan and he had no further comment. Um, so I am requesting the commission to issue an order of resource area delineation for this lot at 35 Crosby Road. Thank right. you. Thank you. Uh, Leah, any kind of additional comments? Nope, that covers it. 
Uh, I'll go around and let me know if you want to see the actual plan. So otherwise, we'll just keep on going. Betsy, any questions or comments? Yeah, I'm looking at the plan online and it looks fine. Uh, Jonathan? No questions, no comments. Patrick? I don't have anything. Okay. No. Uh, we'll also open it up to the public if you have any questions or comments or um, anything in specific. We're dealing with 35 Crosby Road, please raise your hand as I babble on to give you an opportunity to raise your hand. I also have uh, no questions since it's been reviewed by a peer reviewer and everything has been received. All right, seeing anything, Leah? Nope. Okay, great. Having, uh, having no other comments or questions, uh, do I have a motion um, to uh, close the hearing and issue the ORAD in a positive termination agreement with the resource areas? I make a motion to close the hearing and issue an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation at 35 Crosby Road. I have a second. Uh, second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Betsy. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Uh, Patrick. Yes. I am also a yes. Uh, you all set. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good night, folks. Good night. Yeah. All right. All right, Leah. Now the public hearings are done. Right. Action um, items. Yeah. Can we skip for a minute to 29 Pollard? Um, it's the last action item. You're muted, but you probably said okay. <laughs> I did. I was about to take a mouthful, and I didn't think that would be appropriate to <laughs> not be muted. Hand raised, and the attendees also just to be aware of. Okay. Yeah, that's the applicant. I'll promote him. So I can do a little recap for you in the meantime, if you'd like. Go for it. Um, <clears throat> so the order for this property 29 pollard um the commission approved a plan during that hearing that was going to alter 9600 square feet of riverfront area and then we had a special condition asking that prior to commencement of work they revise the plan to shift the disturbance out of the inner riparian um, so we got that plan later we approved that plan as a minor change, bringing the total riverfront disturbance to um, 9,970 square feet. Um, but that plan was denied by the building inspector for not meeting setbacks with the driveway. So we now have a current plan before us. Um, they're requesting as another minor change. This one satisfies the setbacks keeps the house and the parking lot in the same spot. Um, it takes away one parking space and it brings the total riverfront disturbance down a little bit to 9,739 square feet. Nothing else has changed? Just a one removal of one parking space? I believe so, but I'm gonna let James Tatro speak to that. Sounds good. Uh, uh, if Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Leah has represented things perfectly. And yes, she's correct. The only change is this uh, uh, sort of a swap of uh, moving the driveway slightly at the uh, back corner of the property at number 25 and taking out a parking space uh, so that the uh, um, uh, total riverfront area alteration does not does not go up. Okay. Um, and as far as uh, other than giving us the, the background of that, you just kind of recommending approve the minor change. Let me go around uh, to see if anyone has um, any question. Uh, Betsy? No questions. Uh, Jonathan? No questions, no comments. Patrick? Uh, nothing. Yeah, I, I have no comments. Removing a little bit of impervious, reducing the Riverfront area. I have no question that it's appropriate for a minor, uh, minor change. Um, any other comments from the applicant? 
Otherwise, we'll vote I, on it. I just wanted to apologize for a bit of zigzag in the process here. I think we didn't uh, appreciate that there the uh, requirement on the driveway setback uh, would apply as soon as you got off the road. We thought we would be able to get a, an allowance for the fact that we were still hugging that property line and doing so in accordance with the CONCOMS uh, guidelines. So I apologize for our zigzagging on the process here. That was our mistake. No worries on that. Um, do I have a motion? On one second, I just dropped my paper here. That's okay. I, <laughs> so I um, make a motion to approve the request for a minor project change at 29 Pillard Road. Do I have a second? A second. I have a motion and a second. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, going to go reverse order. Patrick. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. And Betsy. Yes. I am also a yes. That motion carries. And the minor change is approved. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. All right, Leah, what's up next? Um, we can back up if you'd like to the, the biggest action item on the list. Um, we have a lot of COC requests for the Highfield subdivision. I can take you guys through them. Please do. All right. So in general, um, they're looking to close out and sorry, Jan, keeping you on your toes. If you could pull this up on GIS, if you just type in McGill and then zoom out some, um, I can just take them through the area they're talking about. So they're looking at um, closing phase one of this subdivision, which is kind of like the initial very large um, loop of McGill Drive for the most part. So it would be, um, so you could see on the west, it would be McGill Drive from Providence Road all the way um, eastward to uh, Manor Hill Drive, Manor Hill Drive itself, and then McGill back down to Old Upton Road. And then the one other piece is Silver Spruce Drive, which is that um, cul-de-sac that points to the south off of McGill. Um, so that's what they're calling phase one, and that's what they're looking for COCs um, from a bunch of orders that they had. We did get as-built plans. We got um, engineer letters. The documents have been re reviewed by Graves. Graves also went out and did a construction completeness visit um, with the planning board. Um, they did have one comment on construction completeness, which is uh, their catch basin sumps will need to be cleaned out before street acceptance. Otherwise, Graves' comments have been satisfied. So to take you guys through each of the orders they're looking at tonight, um, we can start with 370. This one in our notes, it says it was for the irrigation work, um, but Oddly enough, we can't find the order anywhere. We don't have a hard copy in the office. We don't have an electronic copy on our server, nor can we find it on the registry. Um, so I don't exactly know how to make a recommendation on that one, but it's supposedly for the irrigation. Um, we can come back to that afterwards. Uh, 371 was for the subdivision as a whole. I'm in agreement with issuing a partial for phase one from 371. Um, 480 was for the multifamily units down towards Providence Road. Um, I'm in agreement with issuing a complete COC for those multifamily units. Those are all set. 483 was for a handful of lots. Um, so this would be a partial for a subset of those lots that fall in that phase one area. So it would be 210, 212, 214, 216, 218, and 220 McGill are the ones I agree with giving a partial. 507, um, the applicant said construction never commenced on these lots, which appears to be true for 
um, 11 McGill Drive because there's nothing on it. But if you turn on the satellite and you zoom into 9 McGill, there is a house on that lot. So we do need to square that one away. Um, the order also required no disturbed signage um, on that lot. So I'm unsure if that's present because we don't have any documentation on that lot yet. Um, the last two, 519 was specifically for 13 McGill. So I'm in agreement with issuing a complete for that. That one's all set. And then 591 is for the subdivision in its entirety again. It was meant to replace 371, but 371 never got closed out. So um, we've had 371 and 591 kind of running in parallel. 591, I had some questions on going through the conditions. Um, it talks about wetland replication work, which to my knowledge was done a while ago, but I'm not finding the documentation on that. So I wanted to ask the applicant if they perhaps have copies of those documents. And there were two other questions I had that aren't clear with the as-built plans. One is whether no disturbed signage was installed on the appropriate lots. And um, <clears throat> we had another condition for um, roof runoff being recharged on the lots. And I don't see those details on the as-built plans. I know that was a whole lot of information. So um, Feel free to ask me any questions you have. I believe the applicant is one of our attendees. We can promote you if you'd like to be able to have a more direct dialogue with us. Just raise his hand, so I'm going to promote him. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rob Kanapik. I'm counsel to the applicant, and I want to thank uh, the commission and uh, particularly Ms. Uh, Cameron for her careful reading of those multiple orders of conditions for a project that's gone on for, uh, I think, about 20 years. I'm sort of Johnny come lately, uh, take, taking over for prior counsel, although I'm certainly familiar with the project having had an office in Northbridge for uh, the better part of 17 years. The, um, the goal this fall is uh, for the streets in phase one to be accepted. And we are um, on the, uh, we will be, as I understand it, placed on the warrant um, for the fall town meeting. As I'm sure you know, part of the acceptance process is, um, an extensive checklist that includes certificates of compliance. So I, you know, I suppose arguably we could have focused on the, the one or two or perhaps three that were related to the subdivision roadways and infrastructure, but uh, the applicant thought it in probably everybody's best interest to sort of clean up the many orders of conditions that are outstanding. Uh, so that's why these requests were made. And again, I thank you for your consideration. If there are questions to answer, um, I can certainly take stock of them or take note of them. Byron Andrews of uh, Dupreet Engineering is more the, the technical person dealing with this. And it did sound like some of those questions were technical in nature. Um, you know, it would be ideal if this were wrapped up, you know, forthwith this evening. On the other hand, if the commission has uh, you know a legitimate re request of T's to cross and I's to dot. Given that our goal is the town meeting, I think there's time to do that. We certainly want the commission to be satisfied that these are ready to have certificates of compliance. You're muted, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, it kind of my questions because it is a lot all at once. Uh, thanks for going through in detail. Is there any one that precludes the other? You meaning like um, if you're going to sign off for kind of 371 or 591 as for the phase, and if there's not, if there's um, either units or um, houses within that that aren't done, does that preclude doing the overall? I'm just trying to figure out um, 
the best sequence to do this? And are they all independent and standalone? I guess is a different way um, to ask, a much simpler way to ask, actually. Yeah, I mean, so I did list out like some that you could vote on tonight. And then there's just three that, let's see. Yeah, there's three that would have outstanding questions on them. Um, but I would be comfortable with, with you guys issuing two partials and two completes. And then we can we can talk through the other three if you'd like. Okay. Um, and as far as the applicants, um, is doing it piecemeal an a, a, an acceptable approach, or are you looking to get everything done all at once? Uh, piecemeal is fine if that's you know as it has to be. Um, as I said, the, the goal is to have this done so that. Um, the checklist of items can be completed uh, on or before town meeting. Obviously, the further ahead of town meeting that can be done, the better, because other authorities in Grafton, the planning board, uh, and so forth need to weigh in. Uh, but certainly, if there are a few, as I said, lingering T's to cross or I's to dot, I'm, I'm co confident we can do it in a way that will get it done in, in the time required. And uh, so that's fine. Okay. Uh, Sandy, can I make a suggestion? Sure. So uh, Byron is on the, on the call. So I'm just wondering on the items that Leah uh, noted that there's a building on a lot when you said there's no buildings and all of these items that she called out that we wouldn't be able to approve the way they are right now. Do you have answers for her questions so that we could close up first and then potentially make some motions to approve these COCs? Uh, um, until it's done, it's it's not done. No, but I'm just saying, can he confirm the house? Right. So oh, okay. That, yes. Yes. Yep. Right? Can he, uh, confirm the no disturb signs or the recharge so these were questions that leah said she needed to have confirmed so i'm assuming if those can't be confirmed we can only vote on the ones that she has deemed clear to go okay can you uh can you hear me all right yes okay thank you um this is byron andrews um so i can answer a few of the questions although the other questions I will have to do some research on myself. Um, regarding, I think what Leah may be talking about, the lot that was never built, um, um, if it is DEP number 164-507, uh, which is a grafted number 353, um, that's one of the ones that we're applying for COC on. Lot 142 was never, uh, was never built on, but, uh, Lot 143 is complete. The work is complete on lot 143, I believe. And um, regarding the other issues, the no disturb signage, the roof and the roof runoff, those are things that I will have to check into, but I can do that uh, prior to uh, the next conservation meeting. All right, thank you. Does that answer your question, Betsy? And does, Leah, yeah, does that give you any? We should just, um, if there's loose ends that they have to confirm, then we just go ahead and, and follow Leah's suggestion that we uh, make motions to uh, issue COCs as she's recommended um, on their one, two, three, four, five, I think. Do you, do you guys mind if I ask a couple follow up questions? Not at all. Um, so order 164507 that you were just talking about where there's, it was for two lots, one never had a house, one does. Do you know if no disturbed signage is on that lot or you're unsure of any lots? Uh, I'm unsure on any lots. I would have to confirm that. Okay. And then do you know if you have in your files any of the documentation about the wetland replication work? when that was completed? Um, I'll have to check through our, our conservation file, see if I could find that and what 
supporters they refer to. Okay. And then um, if you guys have a copy, electronic or hard copy, whatever, of 164370, the actual order, I, I don't know how it's missing, but we just can't find it. Yeah, I do have a copy. As a matter of fact, I just found it today, which I think is that order because it's dated August 13th, 1999, which is the same date that the DEP listing has for the submission date. So I can forward that to you tomorrow morning. Okay, awesome. Um, if the commission doesn't have any other questions for them, I could take you through like either one file number at a time, or we could bunch the partials, then the completes, then the ones to hold off on, however you want to do it. Any way, any way that you can make it uh, clear and simple, we would appreciate it. So we will defer right. to your uh, knowledge on this subject and let's go on from there. Okay, I guess I have one, one question before we do that. So the their catch basin sumps being cleaned out before street acceptance, that's mm -hmm. something that would be caught in the, the planning board process, right? So that's not something we need to hold back on. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a more of a maintenance thing. So yes, yes okay. I would agree with that. The planning board can um, make sure that gets done. Okay, so then I would recommend issuing partials for 164371 for phase one and 164483 for the lots that are within phase one, which are 210, 212, 214, 216, 218, and 220 McGill. And to make it easy for you, you can say so moved. Uh, I think that's a, a great- So moved. Uh, such a, yeah, there we go. We have a motion. Uh, what, so what's moved. That? Yeah, so we have a motion by Jonathan. Who seconds it? Second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you. Um, roll call vote. Betsy. Yes. Jonathan. Yes. Patrick. Yes. And I am also a yes. So that takes care of those. And others, you need additional information, Leah. I have two. I have two others. I recommend issuing complete COCs for. Okay. 164480 and 164519. Okay. So we have Betsy has a, uh, a motion and a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Patrick? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Uh, Betsy? Yes. I am also a yes. The motion carries. Would you like me to recap what that leaves outstanding? That would be appreciated, yes. So that leaves 164370. Um, Byron said he can forward me a copy of the order tomorrow. Um, 164507, he's going to check on the no disturb signage on 9 McGill Drive. And then 164591, the outstanding questions were about replication documentation, installation of no disturbed signage, and rooftop recharge. Okay. That Leah, sounds can, good. Leah, can I um, just clarify one, uh, one, uh, one thing I said er a little earlier? Um, Regarding 164370, I, I was able to find the application. I was not able to find a notice of intent for that, though. Do you have the order of conditions that we issued? That's the piece I'm looking for. Yeah, I don't have the order of conditions. Okay. I don't. I didn't see, uh, I checked the DEP number, the DEP website, and I didn't see a date for the order of conditions. So I'm wondering if it was ever followed through with or if it was wrapped into 371. Okay, we'll do a little more looking, but we've we've really looked everywhere we can think of. I'll ask prior counsel to take a look as well. Okay, thank you. All right, that clears up that particular action item. Yep. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. What do we have left? Um discussion items okay 
Um, we can just go in order if you'd like. Sure. So we touched on for Bridal Ridge, I think at the last meeting, um, this was um, a single family house lot where the neighbor reported that their neighbor had cut some brush and dumped it. They were thinking possibly in the wetlands. Um, it was tough to tell. I sent Art the photos. He said it was tough to tell, had have to go out. So we decided to spend some of our <clears throat> fee account um, funds on having Art scope it out for us. So Art went out, he confirmed the dumping of um, landscape materials. Some is, it, is within the wetland, um, most is within the buffer zone. He said actual the actual cutting location might also be in the buffer zone on 5 Morgan Drive, but he didn't have um, authority to enter that property. He just scoped things out from for Bridal Ridge. Um, and then he did note that typically you issue violations to the property owner, but you can also cite the violator. So that would be the neighbor in this case. He did talk that through with the owner of four Bridal Ridge too, so that they're aware that it's gonna look like the paperwork's coming to them. Um, so I just wanted to talk to the commission and see if you guys are ready to do an enforcement order or a letter or certified mail or what you want the next steps to be. And sure. then as a side note, they also did ask about a few um, dead ash trees on their property that are pretty close to their house. Um, so they'd be considered hazardous. So per the commission's guidelines that you guys have set in the past, staff already let them know they can take those hazardous trees that are just in the buffer zone down. They don't need anything further from us in the meantime. So can you just uh, give like, not exact, but an order of magnitude when you say filling of landscape waste, is it, you know, a couple wheelbarrows full or is it a significant amount. I, I mean, sure. Um, Jan, can you pull up the uh, art? Did like a little um, marked up map. I think sure. it's page two of his report. It's a few piles worth of brush all along the property line, basically. I think I get it, but where's the, the the number four? Just on the overall at the color sack or whatever. Oh, uh, where is? Yeah, with the numbers. So when you look at, uh, you can do it from the. Just go up. You can just point to which one. So four Bridal Ridge is the blue property. Okay. Five Morgan Drive is yep right there. Gotcha. Okay. And, and the basic is, is that um, it's on for bridal, but they're not the one who put it there? Correct. Okay. So that's, okay. I just want to make sure is, is that what we're dealing with is purely related to wetlands and not right. related to a dispute between two neighbors. Exactly. Okay. All right. So go around real quick, kind of give um, a take on this. And so the next steps, Leah, would be to do an enforcement order um, and then send who is the alleged, you know, person dumping also a notification. Right, would probably CC them, but I didn't know if you guys wanted to go enforcement order or like violation letter or something. Um, I, I would, yeah, I would prefer a violation letter first to give, I mean, I think it, it's always, I mean, I mean, we're not here to, yeah, you know, police. Can yeah, I just no, we, you know, it's an issue, it got brought in front of us, I'd rather do uh, a letter than, um, you know, follow up phone call type of thing, than just issue um, an enforcement order. I mean, I'll go around, uh, Betsy, your opinion. Well, I just wanted to make sure that we know that it's the owner from Four Bridal Ridge that's bringing the refuse 
in or whatever. No, other way around. It's five way, Morgan Drive. Yeah, four, five Morgan is is doing. Do we know for sure that that is the person? Because we could send this letter and they can just say, "Not us." So, I mean, it's it's you know it's one word against another, but the the owner at Four Bridal Ridge said that they've observed them actively doing it. Right. Which I'm just saying, are there any other neighboring people that could be doing the same? as well I, I all i'm saying is before we start casting stones i like the idea of taking the interim steps of just writing a warning letter or saying hey this is because of this being bordering a wetlands area or it's a buffer zone whatever it is um you cannot be doing this are we asking them to remove what they've taken and put in there and uh, offer some guidelines on they can take it to the brush dump or give them, you know, how do they do that? I hate to be so um, rudimentary about it, but I just feel like otherwise you may just get a bunch of excuses or they just ignore it and throw it out. So, so the, and that's kind of, to me, is, is the first thing they shouldn't do is send an enforcement. But there's also a balance of, you know, we received a complaint, we're following up on it based on that complaint. This is what we know without accusing anyone. And if they say, no, we didn't do it, then it becomes, it becomes a responsibility of the owner of the property, you know, and, and to be honest, it becomes more of a, um, a legal dispute between two landowners. And that's when, for us, the only thing we're concerned about is to, um, we move that, uh, those lawn clippings or that landscape waste from the, the wetlands and buffet. That's all we're looking to do. Anything else is out of our realm. We don't want to get involved in at all. And that's the, that's the very, um, very tight rope that we're trying to, to walk, uh, you know, that's my take on it anyways. So, I agree. Uh, Jonathan? We, how much did Art charge us to go out there and investigate this? Um, because we received a bill for five hundred dollars. Okay. So I don't know if there's if we go to that next step to find someone because they've been here. I don't know if that's a possibility, but I don't know if we're recouping our costs. But we investigated a complaint that, you know. Is evidence something happens. We don't know who who did what, but we still have a cost that we incurred as a town committee that we don't get back. So I don't know if that plays into any of the conversation where we could have used that 500 bucks for something else. Um, if we start investigating a lot of these complaints, then you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, and I, that's I, that's a dollar. So, yeah. So. I agree that, I mean, it's a slippery slope. I mean, we also are town board that we have certain responsibilities, but they're pretty narrow, sure. but they're narrow. So to me, it's like, let's deal with this, but not let this get out of hand. Um, and again, it's just, you know, do it in a professional way and so forth. Um, it may, yeah, I mean, even going forward, I would say, I'm not saying that what's there isn't bad, but I've seen worse. Like when we were doing that whole thing with the chicken coop and the bird thing last year. And I would be more than happy to go out at no charge and take pictures, bring them back to the group to see if you think we need more steps involved because $500 is a lot of money. Um, and so for what I just saw, I'm wondering whether, like I said, the slippery slope, do we wanna be doing that? But I'm, I'm just saying I'm more than happy to do a site visit, check something out, take a few pictures, bring them back to Leah and Jan and have them say, hey, we need to elevate this because this looks pretty serious and then bring in the experts. But, uh, um, you know, then that's sort of a moving forward type thing. Not it doesn't address this particular thing. But I still think we start casting stones without having proof people can ignore it so i just like the idea that we can't be charging someone five hundred dollars if we don't have like hard proof that that was the person who did it i think right now 
you know, is one step at a time. Uh, and we've had something reported to us, so we want to follow up on it. Um, you know, uh, yes, we don't want to create a situation where people think it's easy. Oh, I'll just call up on my neighbor because whatever and have sick the conservation commission on. That's not our role. Our role is simply to protect the wetlands. We want to make sure that stays our role and it doesn't get some people already feel like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> we can tr we can try to do our best not to, you know, not to play into it. But we we still have a responsibility at least to address what something comes in. Um, I just want to be yeah. Um, so the wording was used sometimes in the past. It, it makes it a little less offensive. Is notice of potential violation. I yep. could send a letter entitled that to both for Bridal Ridge and F Five Morgan Drive and ask that they contact the office and we talk it through. And then if we're getting nowhere, then we determine next steps after that. I think th I, th I think that's a good first step. Uh, others, uh, Patrick? I think that's a good first step because, yeah, I, I, I think that's probably the way to go. Um, Jonathan? No, I agree. And, and again, I'm not out for blood for 500 bucks. I'm just trying to not tip the scales because we talk a lot in this commission about is it the norm of what we do. So if we start getting complaints, then they're going to say, oh, you better call Art or you better call a scientist because I think Betsy, the reason that we had him go was he knew the lines of the delineation and there was a, a reason that Leah or, or Jan right. couldn't just drive out there because I, I, I volunteer the same thing. I'll go look at it and take pictures for free. You know, I don't care. Um, but again, I just don't want to set a precedent. That's all. Um, or if you do set a precedent that we can recoup the costs of that precedent um, no. in the future. No, my point so. was, Jonathan, that going and it just reconnoitering it to see, like, you know, if there's a ton of stuff there and it needs to be addressed, then you send art or some expert out. If it's stuff that can be easily remediated with a uh, a phone call because it's not a lot of stuff or we may not know whether it's in the buffer zone but we send a warning saying it looks like you may be you know on the edge of the ledge there um i i just think you know it's a lot of money to spend every time someone has an issue so pardon me with this, um is it not the property owner's responsibility to you know, part of me wonders if the avenue for them is really to pursue, you know, someone dumping stuff on their property, trespassing versus us enforcing a boundary line. And that's that's a really good point. I mean, that's the one I don't want to, I want to do, like I said, our only concern is the impact on the wetlands. It's not a dispute between two neighbors and sometimes it's hard to stay there yeah and if we're protecting the wetlands isn't it really the property owner that we should be notifying and they should be dealing with it probably through a different avenue of someone dumping refuse on their property potentially um and then, and again, I mean, I, I, I get what everyone's saying, but sometimes a simple letter that says, hey, you're not supposed to do this, then yeah. the homeowner goes, oh, I didn't know that. Or they could say, yeah, right, whatever they, I mean, it could be either end. If they say, hey, I didn't know that, and then they'll, they'll clean it up, but not only will they clean it up, they won't do it again. But again, it all depends upon the person and we don't know any of the background. We don't want to know any of the background. We just want to see if we can get it cleaned up without having, you know, without getting drawn into anything, I guess is one way to put it. 
Yeah, I do think a letter is a, a good avenue at this point. Okay. Oops. Are you going to make a phone call and then follow up with a letter, or I, I would, I would um, always put something in writing first, just simply because. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry, I misheard it. She was going to send the letter and then ask them to call to discuss, or, or, or just follow up with it and just say, yeah. "Hey, we, you're receiving this letter. This is what's going on." And for me, it's trying to just say what's going on without making any opinions on anything because we don't know anything exactly agreed right. yeah i have faith in leah once she gets better <laughs> to be able to take care of this she's good with covid she's even better without it yeah so thank you <laughs> uh, no i think i think to start with who knows you know we'll see where it leads to um and uh if it goes to something else we'll we'll deal with that um we definitely don't want to get involved in anything between two neighbors that's not what we do right so so i'm all for that that's why i was asking just how much it was because you know yeah i get it yep all right do you need anything else more on this layer are you you enough to on that one, I'm good. Are, okay. Are you guys ready for the next one? Sure. All right. So um, Fisherville Terrace is a 40B. Um, so because it's a 40B and they aren't they aren't close enough to wetlands under the state act, and then it's a 40B, which takes our bylaws and puts them in the comprehensive permit. So previously, we didn't have jurisdiction here. Um, issues were cropping up with erosion and sedimentation. And so I was advising the building department on, you know, this is what I would do if it was in my jurisdiction. Um, and that's how it went on for a little while. Um, however, sediment has now gone across Main Street and into a wetland across the street. <coughs> um, we have this documented pretty thoroughly from Graves. Um, if Jan wants to pull up that report, um, we got some photos and stuff um, to take a look at. The attorney for the ZBA drafted a cease and desist last week. Um, I don't know the current status of that cease and desist, but I did get an email this evening um, from the applicant who's also on the line if you guys need to speak with him. Um, he is currently working with his team to evaluate the impacts of this um, sedimentation across the street um, into the wetlands so that we can get a scope of what happened and, and what will need to be done to correct it. Um, so I wanted to bring this to you guys to bring so you up this to isn't speed even, on it. This isn't even all the rain we just had. This is a previous no. storm. Correct. Wow. This, this was the week that I was away. And then I returned last week um, with, you know, <laughs> with COVID. So <laughs> a little bit behind, um, but, you know, he's at, he's working with his team to, to check out, you know, scope out what happened, which we have some photos already from Jeff um, so that we can, we can figure out what to do to correct this. Yeah, that, that's not minor. No. So if you want to, promote him and uh, pr promote the <coughs> applicant just so that uh, give his, give him the opportunity to talk about this. Hello, my name is Mayor from uh, Fisherville Terrace. So this happened, um, this is the rainstorm August, I believe it's 26th. Uh, it was a thunderstorm uh, in the evening and we had some uh, I mean, the engineer is still looking into exactly what happened, but we had some uh, sediment going to the pipe across the street. Okay, and 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 it, obviously, the erosion protection that you had was not sufficient. And what have you done since then to correct it? So since then, we have um, we have uh, cleaned up the, the whole entrance. Uh, got we got a bunch of. Um, 
stone uh stone check dams and stuff so i checked it this morning there's no sediment going into uh into the wetlands this morning okay after the storms yesterday yeah yesterday and like all day all day today it was not it was clean water going into the the wetlands okay um leah kind of your advice um this is a good update but as far as like our next steps yeah i mean so i'm a little afraid that with the rain yesterday and today it might have washed it further downstream um so i'm not really sure where we go from here um i'd probably have to get art to go out there because i can't i can't go out there currently correct um yeah also yeah um that combined with um You know, it, it just becomes an understanding of what the impacts were. So, right. uh, I mean, that's what we need to determine because that's going to inform what the solution is. You know, is it, you know, and it could be a wide variety of potential things that you can do or not, that you're not, uh, that you can't do. And um, so I have one question for the applicant, which is, do you have a wetland scientist that you're working with? Uh, we can get one on site, but we, uh, Steve, can, uh, Steve, our engineer, can get one, but we don't have a wetland scientist right now. Okay, because if you're going to need to document impacts and then potential mitigation, that's that's who you're going to need. Okay. Yeah, I mean, basically, we need someone to go out there and set, assess. You, you know, um, the ZBA will deal with the erosion control problems and so forth like that because it's not under our specific jurisdiction. Yep. Um, th the issue in what we're concerned about is um, what's reached the, the wetlands and how does that get cleaned up and what's the best way to do that. And as Leah mentioned, that that's with a wetland scientist. Um, and it's going out and making an assessment is, is really what it really takes. Um, and then submitting that back to us so that we can have our peer review a look at it. Um, is that about right, Leah? So I was going to ask, do you want, do you want the plan to come from them and, and they they get a wetland consultant, they come up with the plan, we give that to art to check, or do you want to just collect some funds from the applicant to hire art directly? Okay. Uh, well, that let's, let's offer that uh, to the applicant and just, so basically you'd, you'd skip a step. Um, uh, we have a peer consultant that does um, our reviews of, of, you know, wetlands and impacts and restoration. I mean, um, we could get a quote from them and you you'd basically, like you do review, f review fees is submit and then they would go out and take a look at it. I mean, that's your preference. Well, let me check with my engineer on what he thinks is the best way and then I'll, I'll get back to you guys. Okay. And, and so the, the clock is ticking yep. as far as, you know, just what we got the last two days. Um, we don't know what's as far as what's, you know, what comes next. So. Yep. Okay. Um, does that cover it, Leah, as far as. Yeah, I think as long, I mean, we should probably set like some kind of deadline on what I was going to suggest is uh, you know is um, I appreciate you being here at the meeting but we would just follow up with a letter to make sure everyone's on the same page um, and, and like as far as uh, talking to your engineer and getting back to us you know could that be done by the end of the week or you're talking next week I think you're muted if you're speaking. Yeah, so today's Tuesday. Uh, I'll have a response by Monday. Okay. So so we'll just follow up and, and just so that we, the big thing for us is to document it at, uh, in our records and we can follow up the letter. And if you get back to staff, to Leah, um, then, uh, you know, we can move forward with whether it's hiring directly um, art or whether it's going through your wetland 
uh, consultant, you know, that's, it's your, you are the applicant, we'll defer to you at this point. Uh, but just to let you know, at some point, we will have our peer review, review whatever reports uh, your wetland scientists come up with. Got it. Okay. And that then work? what, what would you like to happen to have happen if we don't get the answer by Monday? Um, then it's an enforcement order. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. So the 12 page report from Graves that had recommendations at the very bottom of it. So do we know if all of those were followed? Um, and why so, wouldn't Graves do the follow-up on this? I'm, I may be missing something. I just want to know. So Graves is an engineer. And so they were looking at erosion control, correct, Leah? Correct. They were looking at erosion control at the site. So that's uh, silt fences, uh, wattles, check dams, all those type of things. So they were looking at the erosion control plan. Because the sediment got into a wetland area, okay. what we're trying to do is assess the impact to the wetlands. That's a wetland scientist. So Graves is not going to go out and assess impacts to a wetland okay. resource area. All right. I get it now. Thank yep. you. No problem. So, so, so we meet in two weeks. So um, you'll be owed kind of a, um, a response by next Monday, whether they're gonna, um, you know, hire their own wetland scientists or they wanna come through us. And then I would say by the time we have our next meeting, we should have a report on the status of that review. Okay. Got it. Okay. Well, thank you for coming tonight and being available. Thank um, you. And just you know, it, it makes it makes it much easier. Um, obviously, you know, our role is to protect the wetlands, and obviously, this you know, your construction project has caused an impact. So we want to correct that. That's where we want to concentrate on. ZBA will deal with a lot of the other erosion issues. Got it. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anything else on this, Leah? Or are we pretty good on the direction? Good on this. I just got one other item for you guys. Sure. Okay. Um, so I wanted to give an update on 95 North Street um, with our, our passive recreation park. Um, so CPC voted to endorse our application for the October town meeting. So that's exciting. Um, that is October 17. Um, and then I have a few other dates to throw at you guys and I can follow up with an email um, with these in them. Let me just write that down. So the next steps, um, we're going to do a presentation to the select board on September 20. We do also have a CONCOM meeting that night. So I've got to work with Jen um, to see how we can coordinate that if, if she's going to take care of that or if I need to hop back and forth between select board and, and our meeting on the 20th. Um, but we will give our presentation there. Um, we're going to have the Recreation Commission is going to attend our October 4th CONCOM meeting um, so that as a whole, we can strategize for town meeting, you know, what we want said, who's going to say it, what the visuals are going to be for the screen um, so that we can all be on the same page. And then um, we're going to have our third meeting for the public on October six we're aiming for that to be in person with the landscape architect rdla and then we, i don't have a date yet but we're possibly also presenting to fincom since they you know they give their yes or no recommendations in the um in the warrant booklet that goes out to residents um so we want to loop them in as well yeah and, um, and that and on that one we just want to make sure that we make a very good case for the value of the fact that, you know, this land was donated. Um, it was a wish, you know, and we want to make a, a reason why it, it's worth to do it. And it has to be based in the return and the value of the land and 
what we're looking to do there. And obviously talking about some of the potential grants, which we, we can't rely on the way the grants are written, just be very focused on um, the financial side of what we're doing. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Do you guys have any questions for me about the, the park? I don't, but I do need to talk about once you're finished here is about several trips and what my availability is. Yeah, that that's all I got. So go for it. Okay. So on the 20th, I have, um, I am out on Nantucket for a, a workshop for a project out there and I should be coming back um, and I should be able to call in on the 20th um, but I will be doing it for my iPad. So if I could have someone be ready to kind of run the meeting, um, I don't know. I don't know how easy that's going to be. I've done it before, um, but um, I just don't know. Yeah, I just don't know how well that will work. That's all. So I want to make sure there's a backup for that. And then um, October, October 4th, um, I am again on Martha's, uh, on, on uh, Nantucket, but it is, I am on vacation. Um, so that is tough. I, I would be much, it's be much easier. I have to look at the schedule. I might be able to make that. I will let you know on that one um, because I'll be coming back from Nantucket on that. Um, and then 18th, I'm fine. And then November 1st, I am out in San Francisco, but I will be able to call in because I'll, I will be in a static place. Um, that's it for now. Okay, question on 10-4. So is the joint meeting with REC something that you'd like me to look at alternate dates for or you know, do you want to give me your feedback to the side or? So on which date, 10-4, you said? Yeah, so 10-4, I was looking to have people from the Recreation Commission attend our Conservation Commission meeting so we can yep. strategize as a group for the presentation at town meeting for the park. Okay, so I would say, why don't we do something ahead of time just so that I just don't know exactly where I'll be at that particular time at seven o'clock. I will probably be in Falmouth um, and can probably find a place to call in, but I can't, I don't want to get, I don't want to say that and then not be able to do it because right. I don't have service. No, I understand. I just, I didn't know, do you want me to try to, um, the only other meeting we have scheduled between now and town meeting would be 920, but 920, we're already looking at being at the select board. So if if it was crucial for you to attend the joint meeting with REC, we'd have to schedule a whole different meeting night that we don't already have on our calendar. I yeah. just didn't know, is that something you want me to explore doing? Or if you have thoughts on you know the presentation and, and what you want said, do you wanna just send those individually to me? Um, so I have them for that night. Um, just, okay. I just didn't know what your take was on how crucial it it be that you're present for that. Between uh, between the, the two groups, I mean, you guys are doing a fine job. I'd like to be there, but I don't think it's it's absolutely necessary. Okay. I can send you like a recap afterwards. And then if you have questions, you can let me know. That would be great. And I'll okay. check what my schedule is because I'm actually coming back that day. And if I'm back at home, I can call in. Okay. If you I have, have like three months of traveling, so. If you have any thoughts you want relayed to that, you know, working yep. group of sorts, um, just get them, get them to me or jam. Okay. Um, and then we can have them. Do we have any kind of PowerPoint that you're pulling together or what's. 
our DLA has started on visuals. Um, okay. we're, we're tweaking them as we go. Um, we don't have a like a final draft yet. It's okay. it's all in the works now. Gotcha. So cool. Sorry to uh, take over the, the meeting with my schedule, but I know I have a lot of travel coming up. No, that's fine. And Did then any... also, yeah, also in like end of October, beginning of November. I'm doing another trip out to Phoenix and I have one also to Chicago. So, so lots of travel What happens because, you know, here's the thing other than Jonathan, right? None of us has the expertise. If we have a meeting without Sandy, that's like, I wouldn't say that. Patrick's been around longer than I oh, have. Um, I don't, I don't know Patrick's, but I know that Jonathan, you're at the meetings, you tend to ask a lot of questions. So uh, all I'm <laughs> saying is, I don't I, have I, scientific background to do due diligence. And I'm just saying, what's the value of the meeting without that expertise leading the meeting? That's all. So, so just, just remember, you know, uh, the Conservation Commission is a regulatory board. So we have peer reviewers and everything else. And I have all the faith in either Patrick or Jonathan to running a meeting. So there's a very big difference between running the meeting and asking questions. I mean, that's what our peer reviewers are for. Plus okay. we have staff. We also have great staff. Um, as, as noted tonight, I rely heavily on Leah. Uh, right. Otherwise, if, if she leaves, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna stay basically. <laughs> um, yeah, having staff is huge. So. Patrick and Jonathan can run a meeting, but all I'm saying is in terms of, you know, the questions that need to be asked, I know that Leah and Jan are great, but I'm just saying there just seems to be that like extra layer of mm, uh, je ne sais quoi. That, and that's kind of what our peer reviewers are for. And, and their letters are really, yeah, that's, you know. Uh, I'm not doing in-depth reviews of of all these projects, you know, but, and, and you know, Jonathan's got a good background and, and Patrick's no, has a little different background. Or... But I, I hear you, Betsy. It's Sandy has the cadence. She has the expertise. She has the knowledge. So I'm going to be sitting there going, Leah oh. or Jen or, you know, and so I, I, mean, I, I go step up and report before each meeting. So I, at least I have some, clue um but i'm still only a year into this and still learning so yeah, it's, it's it's a long process i mean i have the advantage of this is 30 years of my experience um but there's loads of conservation commissioners that you know have a a, a wide variety of of members and and they do just fine and i definitely have you know confidence in in not just the members, but the staff. So, which is a, a big, huge, it, yeah, that's a really big deal that we have that staff. So, thank you, thank you. you I, I, I couldn't do it. I mean, I, that's just I don't have the time. I mean, um, and I feel sorry for every all the towns that don't have staff. And I, we have other engineers in our company that are on commissions and. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough. It becomes a second, you know, part time job, and that's that's unfortunate, you know. So, which why so many Western towns and you know they're having so much trouble filling their conservation commissions. So, but that's a different issue. So, so for Halloween, you're dressing up in superhero costumes with capes. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, SC Super Commission. But uh, yeah, so anyways, I, I do. I mean, as far as running the hearings, I mean, I, I have confidence in people doing that. I don't think this, I don't think that's a big, big problem just because folks may do it different than me. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean anything. It just means it's different. So, all right. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Having said that, I'm going to go finish my dinner. I make a motion that we adjourn for the evening until our next second. meeting. Oh, uh, we got a motion in a second. Roll call vote. Betsy. Aye, yes. Jonathan. 
Yes. Patrick. Yes. All right, we're good. 